Looking ahead, number three, we are going to be subtracting polynomials today. Uh, again, rewatch the video as many times as you'd like. Read the examples in the book. Uh, they use the algebra tiles. So for those of you that like to circle and square, that might be a little bit uh, different to follow along with. Um, watch personal tutors. They may do it a number of different ways um, for this. So um, the other day, we did adding polynomials. Today, we'll be subtracting polynomials. Um, this is LA11 in your book, not 11. Just kidding. That's where your homework starts. We're on LA9. Uh, subtracting polynomials. Obviously, we know how to subtract. Uh, that's going to be no different today. So let's get started. Subtracting polynomials. I have this line down the middle uh, to show you that we can do it a couple different ways. We know that Ms. Simmers likes to uh, show her work by circling or squaring her like terms, the things that she can combine. So I like to do it that way. So that's what I'm going to show in this first example when I'm subtracting the polynomials 5x plus 4 and 3x plus 2. So I see that I have a like term of 5x and 3x. Just like yesterday we were adding, except this is a little different because now I need to remember I'm subtracting these two things, not putting them together. So I say, okay, 5x minus 3x gives me a value of 2x. Then I could go ahead and say, well, 4 minus 2 then is a positive 2. So I need to remember that I'm going to put the sign in front of what the value represents, um, not because I'm subtracting, I wouldn't put a negative there. Okay? Another way you could do this on the right here is, like we talked about before, we can line up our values and know that we're subtracting them by showing that here and putting a line underneath. So subtracting would be 4 minus 2 is 2, keeping our plus sign there. 5x minus 3x is 2x. So either way, I end up with that same result, depending on just what I prefer. If you were someone that really still likes the, using the tiles, you could do that too, knowing I'm having, I have a total right here, my total of 5x, so I could draw those boxes, those 5x boxes. If you're someone who likes this, I think it gets a little bit messy for me, but you may enjoy it. And then plus those four individuals. And it tells you you're taking away this negative, this, you're taking away the subtracting that 3x plus 2. So it tells me that I'm going to be taking away, I don't know why I'm messing around with this, taking away three of those x's. So one, two, three, and two of those two. So then you could count up what am I left over with? I'm left with two x's and two ones, so two x plus two. So either way, again, as long as you're being consistent and you're being um, diligent with this and you're showing your work, you should be fine. Uh, you could pause and try this one if you'd like, or go ahead and stay with it. Um, so let's give this one a try. This one's also a little bit bigger because there's um, an x squared now, so we have a little bit more terms to deal with. So again, I may uh, want to show two different ways for this. So maybe I want to show that I can just find my like terms and subtract them based on those in this first one. So I see that I have an x squared, which I know is there's a 1 in front of that. There's nothing that matches that, so that's going to be by itself. That's 1x squared. There's 0x squareds over here, so I'm not subtracting anything. So I'm still left with that x squared. Then I have that negative 4x squared. Remember, you should take that sign in front. Remember, that's there. So this is a negative 4x minus this negative 1x. So I need to remember that I'm subtracting that negative. This subtraction does not replace that uh, negative. So it's adding the opposite. And I'm left with a negative 3x. Lastly, then I have that negative 6. Remember, take the sign in front. Maybe you're someone who does all that adding the opposite. Still should know it's negative. And that's a negative 6 minus this negative 3 here. So I can do negative 6 minus that negative 3. Then will leave me with a negative 3. So that is me subtracting those polynomials. Maybe you're someone who wants to line them up, which is perfectly fine. So I have my x squared minus 4x minus 6. 
and my negative x, which is like there's a 1 there, minus 3. Put this line here and know that I'm subtracting. This way is good, but it could get a little messy with those adding the opposites. You can't really show that work when you're going vertical. Since there's no x squared, I could just fill in taking away that 0x squared because 1 minus 0 is just 1. So I have a negative 3 minus a negative 3. Or sorry, a negative 6 minus that negative 3. So that's going to give me adding that opposite, and I'm going to have that negative 3 here. Put this back to being a subtraction sign so I don't forget. Negative 4 minus a negative 1. Again, add that opposite. So I really have a negative 3x. And then that 1 minus that 0, well, 1 minus 0 is just 1. And I don't need that 1 in front, so I can just write that as x squared minus 3x minus 3. Okay? There are two right below here. If you want to pause and give it a second to give them a try, that'd be fine. These are right below example 2 in your book on looking ahead number 9, that page number. So go ahead, when you come back, uh, you can walk through it and see if you did it correctly. I'm going to use the combining on this one, and I'll do the stacking on the second one. So here I have uh, 7x minus 2x. So I can write that here, 7x minus 2x, which I know gives me a 5x. Then I can do that negative 5 minus that negative 1, which gives me that adding the opposite, that gives me a negative 1. Four. Okay, so I used my circling uh, and squaring option to show my work there. On the right, I will use the stacking method just to make it a little different for those of you that like different things. So I'm going to rewrite my first one, 2x squared plus 6x minus 4 minus that x squared plus 2x minus 4. Something I noticed a lot of you were doing, adding was lining up things that didn't match each other. So uh, making sure your x's line up, your numbers without variables, and your variables to the right same power line up. So here I go. Uh, maybe I need to do some side work. That's a negative 4 minus a negative 4. Add that opposite. That's going to be a 0. There's nothing there anymore. Um, then I have 6 my, 6x minus 2x. That's going to give me a 4x. Then I have that. 2x squared minus that 1x squared. I know there's a 1 here for a 1x squared. Well, right now, I don't need this variable, and I don't need this 0. So I can simplify this answer to just being x squared plus 4x. Make sure you're showing your work. You're taking notes. You know I'm going to check them uh, tomorrow. Uh, you could do. More examples as well. I encourage you to do um, example three in your book and then following the check your progress C and D. For now, I'm going to jump to a word problem on the bottom here. Take a second, maybe pause and read it. This is example four in your book. It says, after X seconds, meaning X is the number we don't know, cyclist A travels 16 times x plus 2 feet. So that obviously is a value, but we don't know that right now. And cyclist B travels 19 times x minus 1 feet. After 120 seconds, how many more feet does cyclist B travel? So we're looking, like, we're looking at the difference. We need to realize how many more does cyclist B travel. We're looking for the difference in the distance of cyclist B and the distance of cyclist A. So without A, what is B is kind of what you can look at this as. So we have to mark, okay, well, the distance of B we see is here, so we can replace that. We have 19x minus 1. His distance or her distance is further than cyclist A's distance, so that's what I fill in there. Since I'm subtracting them, again, depending on the strategy you want to use, um, you could get rid of the parentheses, too, to make it look a little neater. So the minus 1, minus 16x plus 2, if that helps um, with the neatness of your work, that's totally fine. Um, so here I am uh, finding my terms that I can circle or pair. I have a 19x, 
and a negative 16x. Notice how I took that. If you want to do that, add the opposite thing. That's totally fine. So I could be subtracting 16 minus a 16x um, or taking away the opposite there. So um, 19 minus 16 um, is what I have right here. So get rid of that. Uh, minus 16, that leaves us with just 3x. We have our 1 minus our 2. So what I have there is 1 minus 2. Well, that gives me a value of a negative 3. That negative 1 minus 2, if I add the opposite, I have a negative 3. So I have a 3x minus 3. Um, with that, I can evaluate the expression for 120 minutes. It says after 120 seconds, and they said x represent our seconds. So to finish solving this, I would just plug in 120 for x and solve for the value. And when I do that, I end up with 360 minus 3, which is 357. So what this means is cyclist B travels 137 feet further in that time. Okay, um, that one was a little choppy. That's I think that's the problem with um, taking away those parentheses. You might want to leave them on because I got a little um, mixed up in this spot, knowing that was a subtracting and that is a positive 16. So be careful on that part. Uh, again, don't forget to rewatch the video or do whatever you need to do. That um, some example some checks you might be able to do if you looked at LA 10 you could try check your understanding C and D and also the word problem E on that next page those would be good things to try uh, and then you can check the answers when you get to school so I'm hoping that we are all ready to go you took good notes that I can check tomorrow and we're getting used to showing our work so have a good night or morning whenever you're watching this and we'll see you then